Welcome to Adult YPWW Lesson 1. I do not own the rights to this music. Today's topic is The Final Age, A Time of Destination. The lesson text is coming out of Amos chapter 5, verses 18 through 20. The memory verse. I will read the King James Version first and then the New International Version of Amos chapter 5, verse 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. The New International Version. Woe to you who long for the day of the Lord. Why do you long for the day of the Lord? That day will be darkness, not light. The Introduction. The prophetic books in the Hebrew Bible best represent the Old Testament's concern with time. Specifically, this body of literature pays a great deal of attention to the direction in which history was heading. In short, existence is meaningful. It has a goal. As it relates to the people of Israel, the Hebrew Bible prophets believe that the purpose of time was to bring back the glory days of Israel. We shall say more about this briefly. This blessedness was to be the result of Yahweh's dramatic intervention in history, the day of the Lord. Many Old Testament texts refer to this period. For the sake of specificity, this lesson will focus on the day of the Lord as listed in Amos chapter 6, verses 18 through 20. The information given in Amos chapter 1, verse 1, and Amos chapter 7, verse 10, tells us that Amos prophesied during the range of use value, Judah and Jeroboam, king of Israel. Consequently, this book is generally dated around 750 BC. Moreover, this document is known for its concern for social justice. In short, Amos champions the cause of the poor. He denounced the elite of Israel because they were taking advantage of those who were less fortunate than them. The Discussion the day of the Lord, quote, was a concept used in ancient Israel that expressed a Hebraic belief about Yahweh's attention as it pertains to time. The origins of this tenet are unknown. However, the majority of the Old Testament scholarship associates this idea with the warlike understanding of God that existed within the community of, of Israel. They had a very nationalistic understanding of the day of the Lord. To the Israelites, daily events pointed to the moment in which Yahweh was going to intervene in history, totally destroy the enemies of Israel and Judah, and return the social, economic, intellectual, religious, and political prosperity that the nation of Israel had experienced under the rulership of David and Solomon. Yet, Amos understood time differently. Notice his interpretation of the day of the Lord. He did not see it in a nationalistic sense, but in a universal one. That is to say, Amos saw the day of the Lord as being that time when God would interrupt history and destroy all of his enemies, even those who were Israelites. To him, one's ethical behavior made a person either a friend or a foe of God, not one's race. In a word, Amos saw daily events leading up to the moment in which God was going to deal with with every, everyone fairly. The application. To us, the text says three things. Number one, time is a gift from God. Number two, time is purposeful. And number three, time is to be valued. Time is a gift from God. He grants us the privilege of being among the land of the living. The Lord allows our hearts to pump, our blood to run through our veins and our minds to be alert. Since time is a gift from God, then it is purposeful. That is to say, it is meaningful. The Lord permits us to live so that we can get our souls right with him. God indeed wants us to be successful and enjoy the goodies of daily living. But his primary intention for allowing us to obtain salvation is for ourselves and others. So then time is to be valued. It is not to be wasted. We must make the most of every minute. We should keep a constant check on our spiritual lives as well as on our secular lives. Number one, what is eschatology? Number two, what is the day of the Lord? Number three, what three things does the text say to us today? Number four, how close are we to the day of the Lord? 
And number five, how does Matthew chapter six, verse 33 relate to this lesson? The end. God bless you and thank you for joining me today.